Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome to another session of our program Let us reflect the topic of today's session is divine aid. What do we mean by divine aid or what is the means of attaining divine aid? Or which means will we mention today? Before I mention that, following our routine, I would like to share with you a narration which expresses the excellence, the importance, the benefit of sending blessings in favor of the best in creation, Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said, Send blessings upon me, Allah will bestow mercy upon you. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Allah subhanahu ta'ala has granted us so many blessings. If we truly reflect upon the blessings Allah subhanahu ta'ala has given us, we are overwhelmed. When we look at ourselves, our families, our homes, our households, our communities, when we look around, when we stop for a moment and just look around ourselves, we see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us so much that we cannot thank Him or fulfill the right of thanking Him. We must understand as believers that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us face calamities, problems, difficulties. And when we face these hardships and we succeed, by following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, by responding in the right way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a reward which has no price. What is that reward? I will reveal the reward through the verse of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. So the reward that we attain is the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want divine aid, if we want the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must adopt patience. Remember, patience is our first response. There is no point of complaining about a problem that you have or a hardship that you face. And then you say after that, after complaining to 10 people, you say, oh, now I'm patient. That's not patience. Patience is the initial response, the very first response to problems, calamities, pain, any difficulty. So as believers, we must develop this within ourselves, that we control our emotions, we control our responses, we reflect before we speak. And a lot of the time, a difficulty that we face, a problem that we face, complaining about it or saying something about it, will not solve the problem, will not make the problem go away, will not even change the situation at times. It's just a comment, which is not rewarding. It could even be sinful if it's wrong. But people respond in a negative way, they are deprived of reward. Those who respond in a positive way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them His aid. They are helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the most difficult circumstances, when you are in the lowest of lows, when you feel like there is no one there to help you, when you feel like there is no apparent means of, of salvation or ease, when you feel like you are drowned under the pressure of this world, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember there is a way that you can attain divine aid, and that is by expressing patience, being truly patient being sincerely patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru. O you who believe, adopt patience and exceed in your patience. And one commentary of this is that your patience is such a strong patience 
and as believers you excel in your patience to such an extent that even the disbelievers are moved by it. They see your steadfastness, they see your feeling and they are moved and affected, deeply affected by your patience. And this is the patience that we should try to adopt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in this verse. In the very famous verse of Surah Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear and we shall test you with something from fear and hunger and a lessening of wealth and life and fruits and glad tidings for the patient. In the tafsir of this Imam Tabari mentions that in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the people or will test the believers through fear of the enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test them through drought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test, the, test them through intense, severe hunger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test the people through um, a lessening of crops. They'll have less crops. So those believers who farm, their crops may be less one year. This is a test for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will test them in such a way that the attainment of their objectives will become difficult. There will be hardships in their way. That's how they will be tested. And one of the reasons for this testing is so that the hypocrites and the truthful, they are separated. There is a dis clear distinction between them because the true believers the strong believers, the sincere people, the people of insight, they are the ones who stay calm, remain calm themselves, and they encourage others to be calm. They encourage others to be patient. Sadr al-Afadil Mawlana Sayyid Naimuddin Murad Abadi, he mentions in his tafsir Khazain al-Irfan, he says that this difficulty or this testing, it reveals the obedient people and the disobedient people. So when a problem is faced by a community, or, Muslim, or the Muslim community, the response of those people will reveal whether the people are obedient or disobedient. So the, the obedient people will know, they will just say, maybe this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe this is the result of our bad actions, the result of our shortcomings, we should supplicate, we should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should not complain. Believers and obedient people will be responding like this, Disobedient people will be responding by saying, what did we do to deserve this? Why, how, why are we facing this problem? We've not done anything bad to anyone. We've not wronged anyone. So their thinking, their mindset is a completely different mindset. Imam Shafi'i alayhi rahmah, he mentions in the commentary of this uh, verse, he says that fear means the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hunger means the fasting of Ramadan. And being tested in terms of wealth is a zakat and sadaqah, a charity and zakat. In terms of lives, the testing is through illnesses and rather death which comes through illnesses. And in testing in the expression of the Quran used about fruits, Imam Shafi'i says that this means the death of children. Yes. He first makes this point that children are the fruit of the heart. And then he mentions a hadith. Our Prophet ﷺ said that when the child of a person passes away, dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, you have taken the soul of my servant's child. The angels say, yes, yes Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, you have taken the fruit of his heart. Again, the angels acknowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the angels. He says, what was his response? What did he say? The angels say that his response was this, that he praised you. And he said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, make a house for him in paradise and call it Baytul Hamd, the house of praise. Now I would like to share with you a hadith which touches upon a few topics, including what we have discussed already. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, At-tuhuru shatrul iman, purification is half of faith. Walhamdulillahi tamlaul mizan, and alhamdulillah shall fill the scales. Wa subhanallahi walhamdulillahi tamlaani aw tamlau ma bayna samawati wal ard. And subhanallah and alhamdulillah fill what is between the heavens and the earth. 
nur and salah the prayer is light was sadaqatu burhan and sadaqa charity is evidence was sabru diyaun and patience is illumination or radiance wal qur'anu hujjatun laka aw alayka and the quran is either an evidence for you or an evidence against you kullu an-nas yaghdu fa ba'i'un nafsahu fa mu'tiquha aw mubiquha Every individual spends the morning in such a way where he is selling himself, his nafs, his self. Either he frees it through good action or he destroys it through evil action. Imam Nawawi explains this hadith. Purification is half of faith. One meaning of this is that the reward of purification increases until it reaches half of faith. Another interpretation which he gives is that just as faith, embracing faith, it erases sins, in the same way, when a believer performs wudu, his previous sins are washed away or erased. But obviously, such a wudu is only there because of faith. So it's considered to be half, purification is considered to be half of faith. Alhamdulillah shall fill the scales and subhanallah and alhamdulillah will fill what is between the heavens and the earth. We know this is established, Imam Nawawi says from the Quran and Sunnah, that deeds shall be weighed in the hereafter. And obviously uh, some deeds will weigh more, some deeds will weigh less. And the reason why these statements have more reward or are more rewarding because of the meaning they carry. Subhanallah expresses the purity of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Allah subhanahu ta'ala is pure from every fault. And alhamdulillah, this expresses, this expression for the creation expresses a dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's expressing the praise of Allah subhanahu ta'ala and it's expressing gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. The prayer is light or is a light. The meaning mentioned by Imam Nawawi is that just as light removes darkness, the prayer or offering the prayer, it removes the effects or it keeps immodesty and other, and other evil actions away. He also mentions another meaning for this. On the day of judgment, the face of the worshipping believer, the worshipper, the one who prayed in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who offered his salah, his face will be illuminated, his face will be shining on the Day of Judgment. And even in this world, Imam Nawawi says, the people who pray often, there's a, there is a certain glow in their faces. It has nothing to do with complexion. This is something which is observed by uh, people. This is something which has been passed down by our scholars who have confirmed this, that there is a glow of piety in the faces of the people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In explaining sadaqah is an evidence, Imam Nabawi mentions two opinions, interpretations. He says one interpretation is that on the day of judgment, a, a person will be asked about his wealth, about how he spent his wealth, and his charities will come forth, and there will be evidence for his right spending or the right spending of his wealth. And in another interpretation, he mentions that one is usually inclined to wealth, uh, his personal wealth. And spending from his personal wealth is actually a sign of the truthfulness of his faith. That he claims to be a believer, so he's spending from his wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That spending in itself becomes evidence of the truth of his claim and the truth of his faith. In explaining how sabr is an illumination or radiance, Imam Nawawi says that this is a desirable deed. It's a good deed. He also mentions that a person who adopts patience, there is a freshness in, in his personality. He is steadfast upon guidance. Then he quotes uh, different scholars. He says, Sayyidina Ibrahim Khawas alayhi rahmah has mentioned that to remain steadfast upon the book and the sunnah, this is patience. So patience upon adherence to the book of Allah subhanahu ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He also quotes Ustaz Abu Ali Daqaq alayhi rahma who, who said that the reality of patience is that one does not question or object to fate, divine decree, whatever Allah subhanahu ta'ala has decreed, accepting it, not complaining about it, 
not responding in a negative way. The Qur'an is evidence for you or evidence against you. In explaining this, he mentions that if someone recites the Qur'an and follows the rulings of the Qur'an, then this will be an evidence for him or he, does, or he acts otherwise, this will be evidence against him. In explaining the last part of the hadith, Imam Nabawi mentions that every person spends the morning in such a way where he is selling himself, either he is freeing himself or he is destroying himself. And the indication from the hadith is that a person frees himself through good action. He attains salvation through doing good deeds. And one destroys himself or ruins himself through evil deeds, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following satanic ways, by following transgressing against the sharia. We should reflect upon all the elements mentioned in the previous hadith. Very important points mentioned about prayer, about purification, about one's uh, condition in terms of his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his obedience. The Qur'an was mentioned, the prayer was mentioned, patience itself was mentioned. These are the traits or these are the actions which should be natural to a believer. If we haven't already, we should be fully embracing all these actions and performing them to the best of our abilities. Imam Ghazali alayhi rahma writes in his Ihya al that once our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam went to the Ansar, the companions of Madinatul Munawwara. He addressed them saying, are you believers? He questioned them. They remained silent. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who was present and he said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked, What is the sign of your faith? The honorable companions radiallahu ta'ala and whom they answered saying, We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in affluence. We are patient when we face a trial, and we are content with the verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam heard this response, he said, by the Lord of the Kaaba, you are believers. Just to reiterate this point, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, the companions of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, mentioned three points when they were questioned about the sign of their faith. The three elements being that in times of affluence, in times of ease, they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our condition? When we have everything, we seem to be heedless. And then when we face calamities, suddenly we're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for forgiveness. We should be grateful in a state of ease and in a state of blessing. We should not be heedless. The sign, one element, or the first element mentioned by the companions was that when they are in ease, they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second one, when they face a trial, they adopt patience. They are patient. When we face a problem or difficulty, we complain to one and then the other, to a cousin, to a brother, sister, parents. We complain to anyone we find. This was not the way of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum. When we face a calamity or if we ever face a calamity, patience. And the third element, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine decree, they are content with it. They are pleased, they are happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that we are granted daughters only, then we are content with this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that we are granted sons only and we are not granted daughters, we are content with this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that we have no children, then although we do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the time comes that it becomes clear, then we do not complain about this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every state, we are content with divine decree. This is the essence of faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to reflect upon these matters, to be sincere, and accept our efforts. Amin bijahin nabiyil amin. Keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? 
Return to Allah. Let us all reflect.